What's going on guys, this is Eags. I'm pretty tired, so I'm sorry if I sound like really cooked, I am. This was me coaching Enric, who you've seen before. He's the 0-750 LP AUS jungler. And this was the second game of the coaching session, which is on Patreon, by the way. And this was like the fucking funniest thing of all time, this game, because Enric kind of knows when he's trolling. And I'll like, you know, point it out to him. We'll have a laugh and stuff. But regardless of all that, I thought this was a really informative game, which of course is why we're here. It's always why we're here. So I thought I'd get into like the juicy parts of this to show you what's going on. In this game, Enric's going to late invade topside because just look at the summoner spells for me and keystones. We have two combat summoner spells against the TP. We have conqueror, conqueror stacking runes against first strike grasp. Who cares? The only reason why he can't do this is because we see du bon to claim in the mid lane so we have to back out it will be 4v3 still might be good though if this guy is not here at blitzcrank is in lane he can just run in even if he's spotted because they win so hard enric does an excellent clear here i even said this in the coaching session again it's on patreon link down below and if you guys want one-on-one -on -one coaching guaranteed tier climbs honestly there will be discord links down below you can just dm me enric here does something really smart so he goes to walls here and i said if you go something like this i'm gonna be pogging and this is exactly what he does. Reason why this is good is because we know the weak jungler Kane is going to start a Raptors. That now has a four minute timer, by the way. So if you start Raptors, it's four minutes, not 420 for the first camp. Four minutes here. Keep this in mind. It's important. We start Wolves here. We go red and we go Krugs to hit level three. And then we can do something like this, right? Which is exactly what Emmerich does. So I was really happy with this. Unfortunately, his bot lane is already already dead at this point and we have icy rick playing jinx with a coal start into a blitzcrank i respect it but you don't go coal against a blitzcrank i don't care who the eddie carry is enric's going to do red and then he's going to do krugs we know kane is probably around this side transitioning over right Enric's going to come over here and look to invade now at this point it's kind of unlucky this isn't actually like really the gist of the coaching guys but um yeah you know kane shows bot and whatever happens he was a little bit late to this but he ends up getting two kills here mechanics are good because he knows that twitch doesn't have flash he picks up the blitzcrank and even though kane you know one zero two is in a really nice position belvef having two kills is still really nice now here we have to think about where we are going to run and what's it based on camps and enemy jungler you guys have to understand this the jungle is all about camps where you go is 99% about camps. Now, how do we know what camp to go to based on where the enemy jungler has been, where they're going to go, and of course, our own camp situation? Let's just say we're not going to invade the cane here or do anything to him. Naturally, you would probably go like Blue Gromp and maybe back down, right? Maybe you go to Top Crab and back down, something like this. Kane in this game, hitting this control ward, is clearly showing an intention that he's going to run to River because this is how he's moving. Because he's running to River here and it's 325, the crab is 5 seconds away, he's going to do bot crab. But I think here maybe what the best move for this guy is, is to actually just give up the bot crab and run to his raptors. I don't think he should even consider running to this bot crab because you have to think about counterplay guys. So again, in sessions, I'm always going to point this out to the student. This guy, if he's ahead, should do this to beat you. And they'll just be like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, that's kind of 5 hit. You should do this to beat them. And if you both find the right move, you'll probably like meet each other, right? You'll collide. But guess what? That will only happen in High Challenger. The reason Kane again should recall is because that will take about 30 seconds, maybe 35 seconds to get to his Raptors, which is a level 4 Raptor camp. It's important you protect Belver's counterplay. What is the counterplay to that though? So let's just say Kane recalls here without even going into the river and hitting this control ward. Or maybe he even clears this ward and queues over the wall. A couple of seconds after hitting the control ward, because control wards kind of linger for a little bit, the vision. So maybe wait a second, then queue over and base. Don't just base after clearing it, because they might still see you. What is the counterplay if Kane is going to run to Raptors? So lots of junglers here, the Belvef might actually run to the bot crab or something like this, which does look weird. But let's just say Belvef does. What's Kane going to lose if he runs to his Raptors? The potential is bot side, right? So like bot crab, blue and gromp. That is so unlikely here. In fact, it's probably impossible. Blitzcrank's going to run out of base. The Twitch is running back to lane. It's just way too difficult for Belveth to even think about invading this side of the map. And remember, Blitzcrank and Twitch were in kills bot. They killed the Jinx and Milio, even though they both died as well. The point I'm making, guys, is that it's so hard for Belveth to do that. So as Kane, you don't even have to worry about your bot side. Let's just protect the primary hit that Belveth has against me here. Because obviously, she sees me here clearing a ward. 
and she's probably going to think about running to my Raptors because she knows that I started there in this game. That's what Kane should do. What do you guys think that the Belveth should do here based on the camps? And I'm not just talking these camps, even though I said, like, if we were just playing our side. We play both sides of the jungle. We play 14 camps. That's 12 camps. 14 with both scuttles. We play 14 camps. The cane is obviously going to go to this crap. 335 is the picture right now. If you guys want to be the best junglers in the world, you have to anticipate what the map is going to look like, not only in terms of lane states. Is this going to be here? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be here? Is this going to be here? Is this going to be here? Same for this lane. But what are the camp states in 30 seconds time when Emric gets to the middle of the map here? What was the timer I said before? Four minutes, because we know Kane started Raptors. When Enric ran in here, we knew that Kane was standing here about to start at his Raptors. Enric should be running like this. In another game, the next option, or maybe even the first option you're thinking about, this Kane, who is kind of low with first strike, and I'm Conqueror Belvev with a Noon Quiver, I'm thinking about running here if he decides to go Crab, Blue, Gromp. But Enric the Belveth can't in this game because it's way too risky with Blitzcrank being there full HP, Twitch being close as well. If he had some hard winning lanes in mid and bot lane, mid lane's doing fine, but both lanes have to be really like just prioritized here, like pushed up under the enemy tower, ready to move and able to move for him to do that. And he's got to do it quickly as well. And what Enric should do, the Belveth, is run straight to Raptors. We continue with this game. Kane, by the way, is asleep at the wheel doing blue. Whatever, ganks mid, kind of looks doable. Here as well, the cane. If he's on Raptors and he's done them, fair play. We just come back. We've got prior mid and prior top. We can leverage these lanes to get crab, even though Cassio is like, Ooh. this should still be the move back to crab. If we knew that information as well, so we see Kane here, but let's just say we don't see Kane. This is unwatered. When you check these Raptors, guys, you know Kane is still bot side most likely because he should be here, really. Like, I think he should be here protecting this camp at this time, based on what I said earlier. You just ping bot side of the map here. Your only loss when you're doing something up here is here. Yeah, that's it. And if Kane ganks top, you don't even need to ping because you'll be here in time and you hard win. So thankfully, Enric eventually like kind of ends up doing this. The point I'm making here, guys, is like when you track someone properly and you find out, you know, you get in their head, you shouldn't have to wait until this Kane shows before you do this. You need to be playing the game as if there was no fog. So the cover on the map, you take it off when you play the jungle like this. It would just be so fucking easy for you to play games. Henry does crocs, this is fine. Gang's top lane, but used his W on the Raptors. Please don't do this if you're playing a champion with some sort of like important CC. Save it for the actual gank, because here he probably knows he's going to gank top as well. After this, taking these camps is honestly fine. We didn't really talk much about this, but yeah, this is all good. And his mid lane ends up 1v2-ing. Now, really important here, right? Enric said to me, why would I not go mid to help the Cassio shoved? Shove the wave. This wave is now shoved. The Cassio just got two kills on this person and this person. The wave is now shoved. Kane is running out of base somewhere. And as Belvef here, I have a pickaxe after walls, right? Because he's got futures market. The walls give him 110, 120, but 770 gold. Got pickaxe. The cane is also running out of base with maybe an extra item than me. But in terms of gold spent, you can see here the cane has spent more. But I want a fucking base here. I don't want to have to go mid if I don't have to. And he doesn't have to here. At this point, you can just, put, just hit the base button. And if you don't want these two to fight, you tell them to back off. Like if I'm Cassio here as well, I might even consider just leaving the milio. It's to that extent. So Enric here, instead of just you know, basing on that previous wave that Cash shoved, decides to go mid, and he wastes a bunch of tempo here. I would just never recommend doing this, guys, in your game. Now, for him to hit these camps, it's actually fine, to be honest, because it's almost like staying here. He's got to justify staying. Like, yeah, he picked up a bit of gold and experience, but he might actually well clear his bot camps here. So I really didn't like this play just showing mid. But anyway, next point I want to make. Enric decides to run topside. Why? Because he's level 6, and he knows that Kane is on Dragon. This is in Master of US, by the way. Just watch this shit for me. And, and again, bro, this session was so fucking funny. Like, this game was just hilarious as fuck. Um, that being one example. 
We know Kane's on this dragon anyway. We don't need vision. We don't need the person to tell us that Kane's done the dragon. We know he's bot side here. So we immediately think about this side of the map, right? Can you guys see here, like, how it's just dictated all the time by Kane, bro? This guy's going to miss timings. He's going to make mistakes. If you play like a challenger, even if you're zero one one man, like I've done so many sessions recently with like bad games where, or bad games in inverted commas, where like the jungler is kind of, you know, you might be 0-1 or he dies early and the enemy jungler's got a lead. I'm still going to show you how you can beat these players because they're not going to find the best moves to actually just finish the game off, to cover your counterplay. You're always going to have counterplay against these junglers, right? So Enric doing this, checking Raptors, I think it's fine, right? Now here, they actually had a ward in this brush. So whenever you invade somewhere, guys, just remember, like, if you have a sweeper or control ward, put it down in the main spots. Pop your sweeper in the main spots. Enric, when he runs through here, should just be popping his sweeper in this area because you can see this is warded. But it's still kind of fine because Kane is level 5 and you've got good lanes in mid and top. Now, Olaf's not here, but Poppy's farming under a tower, right? So we can just chill. You can see, like, Kane knows this, so maybe it's kind of smart from this guy. But anyway, this is a really good play from Enric, right? So lots of people may have done Crab first. They may have done like their Grom first. Maybe they even run to their red buff. In fact, I reckon this would be the most popular one because everyone has a hard on for buffs, right? But they don't actually think this guy's level five with first strike. I am a Belveth with Noon Quiver pickaxe. They don't think about the game like this, which is why they're not going to be high elo. Sounds toxic, guys, but again, I'm just about telling you the truth and keeping it, you know, fucking as efficient as possible. I don't want to waste my time nor yours. Enrique, you might think this is really risky to do because Poppy comes down here, right? And he gets out. Now, it looks as if he's backing out at this point. And again, get in your opponent's heads. What are they thinking? Oh, the Belveth here is now definitely going to run off, surely, because my Poppy game down. Oh my god, Grass Poppy, so scary. Nah, man, it's, it's not. Like, I'm just going to re-hit you. So this is great for Emmerich. Guys, again, save your, like, big cooldowns. If you're on top of an enemy champion, yeah, and you can just auto-attack them, just do it. Enric again here. He knows that Poppy and Oriana are mid, so he can just wait for Kane, counter maybe 10 seconds, and then hit this guy. And this is all really good. I was really happy with this until this point, where Enric decided to run away from a Kane who's level 5 with no cooldowns, and a Poppy who really isn't scary at all, because here comes the level 7 Olaf who's ahead. Enric here can just, like, tank whatever Poppy throws at him, pop his E, and he's sweet, right? Like, it's just game over. Both, like, it's still good here because Olaf kills the Kane, but he has to use Flash and Ghost. And maybe in another situation, if Enric tanks what Poppy throws at him, Poppy might die as well, right? She still has to Flash, I'm pretty sure. Never mind, she just ults away. Now, I told Enric, we didn't even really look at this death that much because Enric here, like, goes in on the Blitzcrank, and it's pretty hard to tell, like, Twitch is here, even though he shows mid. Like, at this point, you're just going to be focused on this fight, right? So maybe we should say here, like, oh, you saw Twitch mid. And there's probably pings, right, saying Twitch is mid here. Maybe there aren't even any pings. But anyway, this death here is still fine. Because you guys have to understand that Enric dying here, yes, okay. And they do use a bunch of summoner spells, which is still good for Enric and the blue team. Is that Jinx is getting a bunch of gold here. So this pressure, you might think like, oh my god, like he's just overextending here. And fucking being way too alpha, 1v3ing when he sees like Twitch mid and stuff. It's still not too bad. Because the Jinx might even get more gold than what they just got killing the Belveth. Tower plates, minion waves. She's also denying minion waves. So if I forward this like a minute, maybe, and we'll see where the game is at. So here, in terms of gold, the Jinx really isn't that far behind Twitch. Like, he just roamed a lot to get a kill. And I reckon this gold difference is actually being, like, bridged a little bit in that period of time. Guys, last thing we're going to look at in this game, and those of you who have watched my timings videos, you know what we are thinking about here still. It's eight minutes, yeah, in a game. Now, unless this thing has disappeared, maybe Enric. Like, if this thing's not here, and Kane's still level five, if Enric thinks he can hit the Kane here, he should do it. Right? That's your first thought. Kane's going to run here, I'm going to do these counts. But Rift Herald is such a big thing here. This is after the Belveth dies, of course. So here we go. Right, there's Orianna, low HP with no TP. Here is the Twitch and Poppy. Twitch on the wrong side of the map. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Poppy's low. Twitch is low. The Blitzcrank as well is pretty low, I'm, I'm kind of sure. And also Kane, in terms of where he's running. Yes, we know he's here now. But even if he runs top, he's level 5, right? And you've got a similar tempo to him. So you can easily get here on time if you're Belveth. You've got a full HP Cassio. Emilio, who's healthy as well. So what am I hinting at here? Just run straight to Rift Hell. And this was honestly probably the worst move, like... I'm really surprised, like, Henry did this, but... Anyway, he just decides to go bot side, and it's just, like, a bit of a... It's, it's just a bit sleeper and active. We're not fucking jungling here. This is just, let's go to our camps because they're up, and all that stuff, or red buff because it's up. This is not a good move.
Anyway, guys, hopefully this review was useful to those of you watching. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Welcome as well, of course. Uh, leaving a like as well uh, helps the video out a lot and me. So appreciate those of you who are doing that and will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Don't be shit. Bye.